Hey everyone, in this week's podcast, listen to find out how a stand-up comedy competition sponsored by Hostess jogs memories of my childhood friendships and also uh, my first boyfriend who um, almost beat me up. today what are you thinking about when you're walking down the street is your head in a cloud don't you want to know what's going on let's go checking in with mary lynn checking in with mary lynn checking in with mary lynn let's check in with Hi everyone, I got asked to do a show recently, and it was for Hostess. It was a paid gig, and um, you had to talk about Hostess for 60% of your set. And you also had to acknowledge a guy who was in a human, uh, who was a human in a Twinkie outfit, the mascot of Hostess, his name, Kid Twinkie. That's right. I prepared heartily. I mean, I have other stuff going on in my life. So I guess I probably could have prepared more. I I prepared a lot for me. Someone who uh, likes to to freewheel it. I thought long and hard about Hostess. And I also flirted with Twinkie the Kid. You can uh, hear a bit of that right here. I know there's a human in there and um but that you're also part Twinkie, and I'm into it. <laughs> I'm down for it, and I just, uh, I'm married, but I don't have to be. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Do you like older women? He's ageless. He's timeless. The thing that I like about you is that you're like the OG of Hostess Cakes. You're like the Mac Daddy. The Twinkie is, get, is getting it, you know? I just want to wrap my arms around you, and then, like, if I'm going to hug you and my hand accidentally goes inside to your creamy center filling, that would be delicious too. Uh, I like that you have that inside of you at all times. And uh, I think stuffed crust pizza really ripped you off. I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it's bullshit. You're like, uh, I was born like that with some delicious creaminess on the inside. I don't know any other way of being. Step off my shit pizza. I'm speaking for you now. So you can see how electric this was in the room and how it was hard to tear uh, Kid Twinkie and I apart. Um, I'm sure you can just feel that listening to the audio. I also had a bright yellow blazer that I had bought for something else, but it turns out it was really for this so that I could look like a Twinkie as well. As I was thinking about hostess I um wasn't really thinking in terms of one-liners but my experience with the snack cake company in my life and uh, one thing that jogged my memory was my son was on a, a play date well actually he was getting ready for a play date we were in target here's what happened let me back up I'm in target he's standing in the hardware aisle pointing at the light bulbs and I said Yes. He said, can I get this? I said, what? And he said, these amber 40 watt warm incandescent light bulbs. He's 10. He said, because Tyler has a light sensitivity and he's allergic to the lights in our kitchen, the fluorescent lights. First of all, I was like, wow, you know him really well. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't even know we had a kitchen, let alone what the lights were in our kitchen. Not to mention, I didn't even really have any friends. We didn't do that in the 80s. That's not what we were about. We were about um, breakdancing, Atari, and just trying to survive, you know? We were a latchkey generation. I mean, I always had a parent home. I just like to say the word latchkey. I mean, they were home, but they didn't talk to me very much. I mean, they supported me. They kept me comfortable, and they were nice. Um, 
but I'm saying I didn't have a lot of uh, heart to hearts with anyone. I certainly didn't know anyone in my school. I couldn't have told you told you their preferences or if they had an allergy to something. Um, I had one friend, and this is what jogged my memory to hostess. And because our bond was one day, I had uh, the hostess chocolate cupcakes in my bag. First of all, you knew that was going to be a good day. I'm walking around like I'm queen of the universe, just like, we will, we will rock you. Like no one's going to, another one bites the dust. We are the champions. Every queen song going through my head. I'm just walking around in my purple leggings and my white overshirt and my hair scrunchie. That's not true. I didn't really wear hair scrunchies. I had more of a Brian Setzer curly perm look. Yeah, take a moment sit with that. I know it doesn't surprise you. But I was looking around like, I've got two Hostess chocolate cupcakes burning a hole in my goddamn lunch bag. And I couldn't be prouder. It's got that sheet of frosting. I like to take it off first and eat it. and That's when all the clean songs start going through my head. That's when I'm like, I am on top of the world here. I'm about to dig in. And you know, there's two in a package. So I'm I'm not, you know, uh, a selfish queen for the day. I've got a cupcake and I can share it with somebody. And I see um, Gina Rodriguez in the corner and she's looking down. And I just walk over to her and she senses me standing in front of her. So she looks up and I wordlessly give her that chocolate cupcake and a smile almost broke out on her mouth. Then she pulled it back in and she just nodded to me. And she said, cupcake. And I was like, yeah, that's right. From that moment on, we were bonded. I don't even know if, I still don't know if she spoke English. She still calls me 30 years later and she'll just, I'll pick up the phone and she'll just say, cupcake. She'll hang up. That's how strong of a bond the sugar and chemicals of hostess is. That's how much of an enduring friendship it creates. I had another friend, Lisa. She actually got me into children's theater, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. And probably her friendship was one of the best things that ever happened to me. She was much more interested in things in the world than I was. In fact, she'll remember things that we played more than I do. I was a little bit out to lunch, kind of shut down uh, emotionally and socially. But she had a lot going on. She had a lot of different interests. I remember we went to the World Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we dressed the same. And the things that she liked, I kind of went along with. I I rode the coattails of her joy for life. I mean, I did like Morgan Mindy, and I liked roller skating, but her interests were far and wide. She liked uh, the Seven Dwarves, and she had little figures. She liked Disney. She um, she liked mermaids. She liked like little figures, and she would relate to them. And we used to play mermaids, and they would have this uh, glorious. Um, world uh, a floral and fauna but really it was just the bathroom sink with a little um bubbly soap water in it um we'd play in there for hours and uh pretending to be inside of the world of the mermaids she also i did see star wars but she was the one that got um star wars figures and kind of got me into that um She liked the Fraggles. She liked the Muppets. You know what it was? Now that I'm remembering this, she was the one that first got the rainbow suspenders and I followed suit. But she was that person who was unabashedly like, I like this stuff and it is awesome. And I think I was a bit more sarcastic, like afraid to to earnestly like something. And she was one of these people that really 
brought out the playfulness in me. And I'm really thankful for that. Uh, thankful I had a friend like her. I, I remember we used to, our houses were separated by a couple of blocks, but we, but they were on the same uh, position on the block so that you could go on the second story and look out the window. And we used to do, um, lights back and forth. Like a, we weren't, I wasn't, uh, focused enough to really know a Morse code. It w- we would just blink back and forth and that was exciting enough. And, um, her sister, who I believe ended up pretty uh, straight-laced, married and responsible, I think. I don't really know. I kind of lost contact of all the details. But at the time, her sister had a room directly across from Lisa's, and there was always a cloud of smoke coming out of there, and um, Led Zeppelin would be blasting, and ACDC, and Ozzy Osbourne. And I was terrified. She wore feather earrings and really thick black eyeliner and really loved to rock and drink. But I think it was mostly smoke pot. And I didn't really put it together, what it is. It's so interesting when you're a kid, at least for me. I, di- I didn't follow a lot through. I just sort of took information and was like, oh, I'm scared of her. I'm not really sure why. And I remember... um Later in our elementary school years, oh, this is scary because I just realized this is my son's age. Lisa and I found her dad's um, Playboy stack, and then there was also the Joy of Sex book. And her mom used to wear a t shirt that said, I do it twice a day with a picture of a toothbrush on it. And um, I thought that was really cool. And it wasn't until later that I uh, understood the sexual innuendos. I thought it was solely about. Um, toothbrushing and she just had this jaunty uh flirty air about her occasionally while she wore that t-shirt and her dad drove a red corvette with the top down and that was the first time i heard the doors so they were a very influential family and good really good friends to me and i spent a lot of time over there and there was another guy who lived, at, I didn't really, I, it, it still took, that thing about partly information, it still took me a while to understand. It's almost like when your brain just isn't ready and it's not forced on you, you just don't really put the pieces together. There was another kid who learned, um, who, who was really into marijuana and the Dungeons and Dragons. And there was one time, I barely played with his sister. I mean, I did off and on in the neighborhood. You know, there's like kids you run into in the neighborhood, maybe not so much anymore. And then there's the kids that you commit to playing with. She was a neighborhood friend and a, and I rarely was inside of her house. We usually played outside just running around. But uh, for some reason, we went into her house, maybe to use the bathroom or something. And there was smoke coming up from the basement where he was playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I remember connecting that smell but still not grasping what it was or why it was so bad and just sort of accepting that half information and uh, just busting out of there, you know, in my roller skates with my knee-high sweat socks and just, and my short shorts, just roller skating the shit out of that neighborhood. Um, I used to walk to school, elementary school, I actually had a boyfriend, but it wasn't really... Here's how it went down. This guy, his name was Abdullah, and I think he he was one of those kids that was like 21 years old, but still in the uh, third grade, and he used to follow me around, and he was kind of mean. He was known for being a thug. Like, if you looked at him wrong, he wasn't afraid to fight you. And he just informed me that I was going to be his girlfriend. And I tried to get out of it, but I didn't know how to say no. Or like when someone was coming at me, I didn't know. I I just, he was sort of scary. So I just went along with what he said because I thought it would diffuse the situation. And one time he brought to school a little tiny fuzzy um, bunny pin because it was around Easter time, like the kind you would get at the gas station or the drugstore. And... 
it was a nice pin and he he had a lot of feelings and he was attaching them to me and I felt like it was my job to to diffuse it and be the receptacle for his feelings because he was in a lot of pain and so I thought it was my job to just absorb other people's pain and that it would make him feel better if I took the bunny pin even though I had no interest in um really even talking to him at all but I thought okay uh and I I guess he was strong arming me because I didn't tell anybody else about it and I think he told people and I just went along with it and he stood there until I pinned it on my shirt and it had one of those little backs that you had to hold on the other side of the shirt so you put the pin through and the back goes on um it wasn't a safety pin it was a more substantial you know pretty uh pretty big pretty big design some design work on that fuzzy bunny pin and then I remember I tried to take it off and then he ha- happened to be holding some batteries and he threw the batteries in my face because he was mad. So then that was also a part of the reason that I left the pin on. And uh, he used to drag me home by my scarf. I can't really, I don't really have any memory of what I was doing that he didn't want me to do. Like what led up to it or what behavior that I did that didn't agree with him, but he was dragging me home by my scarf and it was in Michigan in the middle of winter. So you're like way bundled up. So I don't have a lot of like swift mobility and my senses were pretty, uh, dull. I had a real, in terms of like being able to physically stand up for myself or react or verbally stand up for myself. But my sensitivity to people was super high you know, like I knew what was going on, but I just sort of took it. So he dragged me by, my, and I remember it was, he, I think he was laughing, and he was, it, the scarf was kind of choking me, but I I thought maybe he didn't know how hard it was, and then how hard he was pulling, and then I was like, this is, I'm starting to get scared. Like, I, I really just didn't know what I was going to do. I guess I was just going to take it because no one else was around and he was walking me home and he dragged me by my scarf and then pushed me up against uh, a metal fence or, you know, chain link is what I was looking for. He pushed me up against a chain link fence. And just as that moment, at that moment, um, our neighbor's mom drives by and she rolls down the window and she said, hey, what are you doing? Stop doing that. And then he did, because he was caught. And then at that point, I was like, well, I'm about halfway home. And again, I don't remember. It's weird when stuff like this happens. Like, I remember the point where the traumatic event happened, and the rest of it is, like, in a black hole. But I remember I could I could show you the place on the walk home, the fence. I don't know if that that fence is still there, but I knew the distance between there and when I had to get home and she drove away. And I don't think it completely scared him off. Um, And I don't know how my, I think he was waiting outside and I finally made it home and he was sort of lurking outside. And I remember my dad came out with a pipe and chased him out of there. And uh, that was scary because my dad wasn't really that type of guy either. So he must have been agitated enough to have that sort of reaction. But I remember being relieved because I thought that meant hopefully that it wouldn't happen again. I don't remember telling my parents that he did that. Um... And also, I didn't use any of this for my comedy material. This is like a recovered memory that I'm having right this moment for the podcast. You're welcome. Oh, friendship. Isn't it a funny thing? Yeah, that part in the fence was kind of nearby the other people's daughter 
who had scoliosis. I remember we had to go visit her. Um, there were a bunch of kids in the neighborhood that used to hang out now that I mentioned it. I don't know why I was alone. I guess I must have walked alone all the time. And that one day he followed me. It was really snowy and bright and cold. And I just wished, I think my hood was up and my scarf was around it. And uh, I couldn't get out of it because he was uh, stronger than me and really intimidating and really angry. And I was really, I, I, I remember the reason why it started. The reason why he liked me was we were racing out in the, in the playground, running like you do when you're a child. You know, you just love to run. And I ran and I beat him. It was me first running and then him. And he was impressed and also angry that I beat him. But, you know, my name got on the map. It's like, uh, what's her name in the first episode of Big Brother? The blonde woman. Uh, Cynthia, no, what's her name? In this episode, you know, I keep it timely, people. She won the first comp and people were like, whoa, your name's on the map. We're going to drag you home and throw you up against a fence now. So, anyway, that was just a little little sidetrack anecdote about friendship. That was really a Me Too movement about, you know, 30 years before the Me Too movement was going to happen. So, uh, shout out to women's rights, to women um, being people and being able to speak up for themselves. Because I sure wasn't um, able to do that. So that's why it kind of blows my mind that my son is growing up the way he is and able to articulate what's going on and have real friends that know each other and I know their parents. And, um, oh, back to the Twinkie competition. So I do my set. I'm dressed like a Twinkie. And I honestly thought it was a competition that's the thing I didn't mention if you if you did the best then you would get money and I really tried to be hostess centric and tell anecdotes about hostess because I thought that's what you're supposed to do but um needless to say I did not win the competition uh John Radinsky won and um you know he, he he does some crowd-pleasing bits, and um, I think he really needed that money. And he's going to do something really good with that money, so I'm proud of him. Harlan Williams was a standout from the competition for me. He wrote all his entire set. I got a little bit of an education about uh, how to write jokes about hostess I can't remember one of his jokes right now I should call him up how does he do that he's like a real pro one-liner just giving it the one-two about hostess so nothing like a little competition that you want to win for the money um, and that you really try to prepare for to show you what you're not really prepared to do but then I came up with this great avenue about friendship and Twinkies and my genuine love for Hostess was just kind of sick if you think about it I mean we drank Kool-Aid back then you know we didn't have friends we had Pop Rocks you just shared your Pop Rocks with somebody and called it a day and have long conversations so that's the story of friendship Twinkies and Cupcakes That's all for now. Thanks for being here.